Hi gorgeous, this is episode number 57 with the wonderful illusionist and entrepreneur Jennifer S. Royal. Hi, this is Jennifer S. Royal. You are listening to the Heart Sales Podcast with the host Christine Slonsky. Enjoy! I'm so excited about the interview with Jennifer S. Royal and I can't wait for us to tune in. Before we do that, make sure you are going to christineschlonsky.com, find the tab Masterclass, Sales Mentality Makeover Masterclass in the menu and register for your free seat um, to be part of the Masterclass, to tune in to amazing, amazing entrepreneurs just like Jennifer, who is also teaching at the masterclass and she's going to share amazing wisdom. So today we are having the interview, but then there will be a big teaching part and that will take place at the masterclass. So hop on over to christineschlansky.com, go to the menu Sales Mentality Makeover Masterclass number three and just reserve your free spot. And I will update you so you can't miss that wonderful class. But today we are going to dive in. So let me give you a little bit of a background on Jennifer because she has a pretty amazing um, CV so far. So she is a professional magician and mindset coach and her journey started already when she was four. And at four, she started doing magic. And then she studied every field of magic, including mentalism and hypnotism. After getting two degrees, academic degrees, and working in the film industry in Germany and Hollywood, she became a full-time entrepreneur, teaching people what they can learn from the mindset of a magician making the impossible possible on a daily basis using special thinking strategies. Jennifer is also the host of the international podcast Pure Mind Magic that interviews brilliant minds from around the world on how we can create more magic in business and in life by using our mind in a different way. I'm so super excited, Jennifer, that you are here at Heart Sales Podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much, Christine. I'm happy to talk to you today. Yeah, and I, your approach is so unique, uh, so wonderful that we are getting together um, because you are an illusionist and you actually bring together that knowledge of years into the world of business by supporting people with their mindset. So give us a little bit more of a background uh, so people can understand um, where, where that magic comes from. That was perfectly described, Christine. So thanks for that. And of course, I'm letting you know. So maybe first of all, to get the clarity here, because yesterday I was approached from someone who wasn't sure that illusionist and magician is the same. And it actually is. So we perform magic illusions for you on stage that you have a good time. So this is the entertainment side of what I'm doing. And I actually started doing magic at the age of four and had my first stage appearance at seven. And after getting two academic degrees and studying every field of magic from card magic to manipulation to big illusions, mentalism, everything, I thought, what could I do to create more value for entrepreneurs and business owners from everything I have learned, the psychology and everything that's going on behind the scenes that you see on stage, the perfect illusion. And there's really a lot to it. And everyone knows that magicians are not allowed to share magic secrets. So I had to come up with another way. And that was mindset. Mm. Because as a magician, you have to have a different mindset. You are dealing with making the impossible possible on a daily basis. And this is what business 
owners and entrepreneurs can definitely learn from the field of magic. Wow, that's that's really impressive because, you know, business sometimes seems like um, so, let's say, dry mm -hmm. <laughs> and strategic. And I just love the idea to bring that magic, that um, that knowledge about illusions to the business because especially with mindset, we all have illusions about it. Many people think that sales, for example, is something that is bad, that it needs to be sleazy or pushy or unethical or it doesn't feel good. And that's basically an illusion because of the mindset they, they have. So what are you um, teaching people in particular so they can, they can get a, a takeaway from your, um, yeah, your teachings? Great question, Christine. So everything really starts with the mindset. And when you think of it, a magician sells you illusions. So a magician sells you nothing and you believe it. But with you buying the ticket, you agree with that. So seeing these illusions and believing in it, like going to the cinema for this time, And I really work with people starting on the mindset, like helping them to see ways they have never seen before and to approach problems and challenges from a completely different angle. And also like letting things go, getting rid of all the attachment to being able to create a special kind of magic to use that as a metaphor because as i said when you deal with magic you have to s develop a different way of thinking patterns because everything you are doing is not possible and you always have to come up with an idea or a strategy that makes this special thing possible. So when you think of making a car appear on stage, from the physical laws of Newton, Newton, it's impossible, but a magician finds the way to make it possible. And also when you think that your smartphone once was impossible and the fly to the moon, and there were people who made it possible, but to accomplish that, you have to change your mindset. You have to go through a mind shift. That's the magic secret. Ah, okay. Wow. It's, a, it's, well, it's in business. It's a little bit like this as well. We just don't really expect um, to talk about illusions and magic. Um, but I just, I just love, I'm fascinated by, by this topic. Um, and yeah, you're right. Like making a car appear or disappear is something that for most of us <laughs> is <laughs> impossible. Um, so How did you start out in, in your own business endeavors? Like you've been on stage with, in, at the age of seven already, but I'm quite sure you, you did not really sell yourself or did you, did you make your offers already yourself? Actually, I sold my first show at the age of 14. And that was while I was shopping together with my mom in the past. And then there was this lady in the shop bringing me all the clothes to try. And we were talking about that I'm doing magic. And that's something that's still to this day very interesting because, you know, and I'm sure, Christine, you made the same experience that when you as a person are fascinating, people are kind of naturally attracted to you. Mm. And this happens all the time when I reveal that I'm a professional magician because it's not like this all-day typical job you have it's just different and people are interested because it's something that's exciting that's that's just special and this was the case also when I was 14 and we were just talking in an easy way and this lady said oh she has her birthday coming up and she was thinking of hiring me as a magician for the party and I thought wow that was so great because I never expected that going out with my mom uh, shopping for clothes and it really happened and I went there I delivered an amazing show and I remember exactly that I did this effect where a spectator 
selects a card, signs the card, then the card gets back in the deck, shuffled, and I take the whole deck of cards, put it to the window, and then when the spectator looks through the deck again, his card just disappeared and he finds it on the back side of the window, like glued from the outside to the window. So he has to open the window to bring in the card again. And this hit people so strong at this party that I think I got like 50 euros tip. So that was really mm -hmm. huge at that time. So that was incredible for me. I, I felt so good. And uh, I thought, wow, it can be so easy selling when you are really in alignment with what you are doing and people can sense that you have all this passion and that you really sell from your heart. Mm. Oh, I just, I just love that, as you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so really? Yeah, I'm a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you are an illusionist. So who knows? I need to be careful here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so fun. So, um, so I guess like with that first sale you, you made for your, for your own services, um, like, do you remember that when the lady invited you to, to perform at her party, did you do it like a did you make an offer or did she just tell you what she was willing to pay or did you go in for the tips like do you remember that situation sure yeah I actually made an offer and she agreed with it and i got the tip then on top but i really made an offer for a show because i when I do this kind of magic, obviously I have this material material cost. Mm. But uh, as mentioned, so I'm really also doing this mind reading stuff because people just seem to love it when I do this telepathy things. And it has to do yeah. a lot with perception and psychology. And there's also a lot that you can learn for your business. And sometimes it has even to do with profiling and cold reading people. So it's a good mix of all this mental skills you have then in your mind and also being very concentrated but this time I made this offer she agreed and I went to the party did it and got even the tip on top wow that's amazing at 14 that's really good at 14 I was um you know bringing newspapers to people's homes on a Sunday <laughs> so there was also, no 50 <laughs> also nice while I I was doing at the time uh, ripping newspapers in half and putting it back together with magic but i still do till this day because it was always the favorite illusion of my mom and this is kind of dedicated to her so i still have this in my magic suitcase and uh, mm. newspapers are great that's cool so how how did you feel when you made the offer and the lady said yes how did it make you feel oh it was really exciting and it felt good because I had the feeling that I'm creating value and that mm. I have something other people desire. Yeah, great. So that most of us as entrepreneurs, we have that, right? Um, but unfortunately, not everybody would feel great in asking for the sale. Um, so I, I really love that story. And do you remember how you felt when you actually received um, the money from her like the payment for your services yes that was a really cool moment because then i thought wow being a magician at this age is really a cool job because you get paid so much better than all the jobs i heard from my friends that they were doing <laughs> like carrying out <laughs> newspapers <laughs> uh, i wouldn't mention that now <laughs> no you brought it up so yeah, it was cool. And also at the time, I mean, she uh, got an invoice, obviously, but she paid in cash and that was so cool. And once I read in a book that when you pay in cash or get paid in cash, there's so much more emotion to it mm. than when you hand over or get handed a plastic card. Yeah. And I really thought about that for a long time. And it's so true because you can't touch it. It's just numbers, digital numbers or this, yeah, 
plastic card, but with real money, it, it feels like real and you feel the energy and you have this feeling of all the things you could do with it. So you attach more freedom to it and it's just a different feeling, even when you bring it to the bank afterwards, but it just feels different. Mm, yeah, I, I, to I totally agree. So what advice would you have for an entrepreneur who knows that they do have a good service or maybe even a great service, something that people need, but they, they really have a difficult time asking for the sale or making an invitation, making an offer? Good question. It again starts with the mindset. So you have to feel worthy for yourself and you have to have the feeling that you have a great offer. So this is how it starts. And it's also taking the pressure out of it and more letting things go and going with the flow and not being so much like feeling you have to follow this sales strategy from someone else. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are just a different salesperson and you sell naturally. And there are people out there who are millionaires and they are selling things in sweaters. So who cares? It's just their personal style and they can do it. So when you have a good product and you are sure that you can help someone else, and we all know that, when you can solve a problem, people will pay for that because everyone is looking to make life easier and get rid of stress and all of that. And the bigger the problem you can solve, the bigger the payment is. And it's also this give and take. So when you give something to people, it's this energy exchange and money is also energy so most people won't feel good when you would give them something for free because they want to give you something back so that you are with them in balance again and I mean of course there are other people but most of them really have this feeling that they want to give you something and I think the magic key here really is to let go of all this pressure that you have to do it in a certain way just think of it how you would like to be sold and adapt to that and go with your own, own personality style to bring in your offer. Yeah, I think that is so, so important. And I know from my clients that if they've done something before where they got like handed a pitch, like do it like this, that uh, it just is often not in alignment and then they sound so weird <laughs> that um, they actually push their clients away instead of inviting them to experience their service or their product, um, which is a shame because the need of the client is not solved. And if you can't solve it, they will go somewhere else. Yeah, that's it. That's really an important lesson I also got in my mind and it's true so and when you do all the work to attract them to you and people are willing to buy you should have this offer so you are adding value to the world with it mm. yeah i also love that you said like the more specialized you are the more unique your your offers your approach the more you can have as an energy exchange with it, which is money and um, you, you got that at a really, really um, young age, which is wonderful. So what can people do? Um, because lots of people listening are coaches or creatives or they, they are light workers, healers, um, therapists. What can they do when they feel they don't have that unique special approach? They've just finished maybe their coaching training or they, they don't really see how they can differentiate themselves. What, what could they do to get more clarity around that? That's also a great question. And I think this is a work in progress. So you're never completely done with it. And it's about finding your own voice and only you can do that. So there are a lot of things you can Google nowadays, but now no one really can help you to find your own voice. So this is a task you have to accomplish for yourself. And the closer you are getting, the more confident you are feeling. Mm. And 
there are certain ways to do that. So you could sit down and write your first book and even when you never ever sell it, but it's a process. So you are starting this creative process because you have to sit down, concentrate, bring your thoughts to paper. So this is a way. Also starting a podcast because then you have to deal with creating a lot of content and you will be forced to find your voice and who you really are. Or when you are more the video type person, you can start your YouTube channel. And also with everything, you don't have to publish it if you don't feel like it, but it's a process for you. And by doing that, you will automatically create a product which you could sell later if you want to. Hmm. So it's about finding finding your voice because I think what, what you probably agree upon is when you find your voice, you found your unique magic because there's only one you uh, with that experiences that you have made in your life. Um, what you have learned, there's like every person is so unique um, that they can create their own magic. Absolutely, Christine. And you see, when you look around, so there are at the time of recording about 600,000 podcasts out there and there is still room. And when you compare it to blogs, the, the number is crazy, but everyone has their special approach to it. And in every industry, even when there are a lot of people already and influencers and consultants and coaches, as you said, you, Christine, you are unique. So everyone made different life experiences and everyone makes decisions in another way. Everyone has other dreams, has another network, has read different books, has listened to different podcasts. And all of that sums up to a really special combination of this unique person. Like every finger print and every human voice is unique and only there once in the whole universe. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of hard to imagine, but that is actually the truth. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a magician. I'm always telling the truth. <laughs> Besides, always. I'm on stage doing a magic show. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, so um, what we want to do today is we want to invite people to the Sales Mentality Makeover Masterclass where you will actually be teaching a whole segment on mindset. Um, and I'm so excited um, to give people the opportunity to, to join us. So the only thing they need to do is they need to go to christineschlansky.com um, to sign up for the masterclass and also for the whole podcast episode, there is um, the show notes, there are the links um, to your podcast as well, which you have an amazing podcast. Um, maybe you just want to say a couple sentences before um, we finish up, but um, you will be teaching the whole segment on the sales mentality makeover masterclass and that will just blow people's minds away. Sure. Thanks for uh, asking, Christine, and also for this great description. And I'm really proud to be a part of your masterclass this time because I just love working with you and your great positive energy. It always lifts me up. Oh, thank you so, so much. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to our next interview. And thank you so much for, um, yeah, for today. Of course. And just in case anyone is curious, you mentioned the podcast and the title is Pure Mind Magic. You can find it everywhere where you're listening to podcasts. And soon you will listen to an awesome interview there with Christine herself. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the next episode and I'm saying bye for now. Thanks. Bye. What an interview. I am really, really happy about um, all the things we talked about, especially the mindset piece. Um, and I just love how Jennifer managed to follow her passion throughout her life. I think that is very, very inspiring and shows us that if we go, if we follow our hearts, then we can also create magic 
or more magic in our lives. So make sure you tune into the next episode where uh, we are going deeper, especially on how Jennifer deals with the rejection, what she thinks about rejection, and she's going to give you amazing advice in what you can do when um, you get rejected um, with your offers, your services to really, really put the focus in a different place. So thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you sign up for the Sales Mentality Makeover Masterclass. That is a free online summit teaching spiritual and practical steps of how to increase your sales and create true wealth without losing your authenticity. There's so many amazing teachers like Jennifer, um, Bob Berg, Lisa Earl McLeod, who I have interviewed in the past here on the podcast. And in the masterclass, they really, really teach a good chunk of the time, a good segment so that you can go and implement those strategies um, and get your business to the next level. So hop on over to christineschlonsky.com find the masterclass in the menu, register for your free seat, and you will be informed when we get started. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and bye for now.